relationship span over 30 years. And I came here today to give words of encouragement to the president for the actions and policies so far made in these less than three weeks of governing a very difficult country like Nigeria. Uh, we discussed a wide range of issues, especially on security and oil theft in the Niger Delta. Myself and my brothers I assure the president that there will be zero oil theft and vandalization in the Niger Delta. We are going to work with NNPC, PCL, and the IOCs to make sure that oil theft is brought to zero. I also want to say that oil theft is encouraged by the military. The military is at the center of oil theft. And we have to make this uh, very, very clear to the Nigerian public. 99% of oil theft can be traced to the Nigerian military, the Army and the Navy especially. The Army and the Navy intimidate the civil defense who are by status the people who are supposed to uh, guard these pipelines. They receive a lot of money from an NPC, PCL, and the IOCs. And just across the corner, you will see a houseboat, a few meters from the houseboat, you will see an oil bunkering refinery or tapping directly from oil well earth. It is very pathetic now. What is happening in the Niger Delta in the past eight years was unprecedented in the history of oil production anywhere in the world. The vandals do not only attack the pipelines. They have migrated from the pipeline and have gone directly to the oil well heads. And they take directly from the oil well heads. They set up half-hazard facilities they call local refinery, artisan refinery. This is crime against humanity because the livelihood of the people is being totally destroyed. The livelihood of the people is totally destroyed. And every meter, you see a naval houseboat or a, an army as both stationed. So the main culprits are the army and the navy. And there are notorious naval commanders who are known to be kingpins of these bunkering activities. Even if they give one billion contracts to everybody in the Niger Delta, because these military men are harmed from the army and the navy, nothing will happen. The president has promised to take decisive action to make sure that this does not continue. It is brought to an end. It is very shameful. So I had volunteered to help to assist and to do the things that are necessary to put a stop to this evil that is being perpetuated against the people of the Niger Delta, the oil bearing community, and the whole of Nigerians. On security, 
I want to clearly say that there are full-scale wars going on in different parts of this country. In the southeast, the IPOB ESN is waging a full-scale war against the government of this country. And many local governments, many communities are deserted, schools are closed, hospitals are closed. The same, in the same vein, in Niger, in Zamfara, in Plateau, in Kaduna, in Yobe, in Boronu, we're only talking about Boko Haram. Boko Haram is just a tip of the iceberg. There's a full-scale war going on. And the blackmail of the Nigerian state by the Nigerian military is shameful. They said they do not have enough armament. And people listen to these false narratives. They are lying. They are liars. I repeat, they are liars because I am a participant. I am a participant in this war. I fight on the side of the government of the Nigerian state. In Plateau, in Niger, in Anambra, in Imo, in Habia, and in River State, and in Abuja. Today you are traveling to Kaduna on this road. It's not the army that made it possible to travel to, for you to travel to Abuja, or travel to Kaduna, vice versa. It is my men, employed by the government of the Nigerian state, stationed in Niger. Today you go to Baga, you go to Chiroro, you go to Wase. We have lost so many men, and we do not use in all this engagement, we don't even have 1% of the armament deployed by the Nigerian military. 1%. And we have had resounding success. So these black men must end. They have enough resources to fight. Instead of fighting, they are busy stealing. They are busy making the government to spend unnecessarily. Where is Dogo today? Who was terrorizing Niger Kaduna? Where is Dogo today? He's nowhere because he had been served his dish that he was serving other people. So well, let us be able to support the government and don't listen to these false narratives. Because somebody must tell the truth. Hey, we don't have arms. An average person is carrying two magazines of AK-47 bullets. The Nigerian army is carrying inside their truck 20, 30 cans. Two magazines of AK-47 is 25 rounds of ammunition. 700 or 750 make up a can. They call it sanding. And they have 20, 25, 30 in their distance. They will leave on slight attack, they will abandon these weapons for the bandits, the insurgents, to take them, to capture them. So in actual fact, the insurgents are investing from the Nigerian military and police to further their insurgency. And most of these people, are they actually insurgents? They are mere criminals. They are mere criminals. You go to some camps, you find 200 vehicles stolen from people. 
Who are the owners of these vehicles? They cut these vehicles into parts, they sell them. You go to some places, you find that human beings' parts are being brought out. They are put in uh, coolers and sold. Woman organ trafficking, etc. Which the governor of Anambra says, Soludo, has also attested to it in one of his interviews. So what I'm trying to say is this. I, as a person who is in the norm, I have given, even before the president came, I knew that we, will, we had never had any person like him aspiring for this position. I'm not flattering him now. I said it before the primaries. I said it during the course of the election. I said it after the election. So all the forces of evil and darkness came together to fight to make sure that Ahmed Bola Tinibu did not become president of Nigeria. Because they are benefiting from the institution failure that is going on. Why is NDDC is not working? Because there are people from here who go and collect all the money from NDDC. All the money. The NDDC, MD, and the board member only want to survive. Let me just take my bread oh, and what I oh. Let them not sack me. Oh. So they take all this thing. At the amnesty program, it's the same thing. They just go collect everything. And it is the people that are sitting there that suffers. How can somebody say 500 billion a month? You are using it to lift people out of poverty. Do you know how many industries that will set up? Do you know how many agricultural settlements that will set up? Where did the money go to? How can somebody say we use $10 billion, almost $8 trillion, to service the glutinous appetite of a few people like us? At the expense of the masses. And then, NLC and TOG will come and say they should give them palliative. What is the proportion? What is the percentage of members of NLC and TOG vice versa the total population of Nigeria? Why will we operate an apartheid system of rewarding a few people at the expense of the generality of the people. Why would they have palliative questioning? The woman in uh, Lotukbene, the woman at Kola, who is switching, or the woman uh, somewhere uh, at Agai, who is swarming, does she have that same palliative? Have we not been having this palliative? Did you not have PTF? They do not have this road uh, maintenance, what do they call it? Huh? FEMA. They are all content pipes. They achieved nothing. They are content pipes. The president should not listen to such advice. Channel the money to fix our education. Channel the money to fix our health, fix our road, fix our agriculture. Don't tell me that they are going to give loan. Agricultural loan is being given by the central bank. How many people assess it? A few people. They assess billions. Do they pay back? Aviation loan is there. Somebody is giving 10 million US dollars, 20 million US dollars, 100 million US dollars as loan to cushion the effect of who? How many Nigerians travel by air? Why will we carry the glutinous appetite of Nigerians, of a few Nigerians who are not even up to 1% and put it on the generality of the people? The president is a firm person. I know him. 
Everywhere I went to campaign, I always say, if I met Bolab Tinibu fails, hold me responsible. Because I had known him, I can stand in the gap and say, this is Ahmed Bolatinibu. I can take bullet for him. And I came today just to say hello and to encourage him and to say we are with him. And inshallah ta'ala is going to succeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have my personal army. Nigeria has been engaging mercenaries, foreign mercenaries from other countries, from Belarus, from South Africa, to fight insurgency. Maybe you are not aware. So why will Nigeria not engage the same, in the same token, locals who have the same way we have and are more effective and are more conversant with the environment. We are not the only one. Hunters Association, different people are engaged. Civilian JTF are engaged to confront this evil that has enveloped this country. I don't have a private army. I am assisting the government as a citizen, as a good citizen of this country to save the lives. Since the, the time we, were, we went there, Kaduna Road had been free. No more kidnapping. We are saving lives. I don't have a private army, and the Constitution does not provide for a private army. The president is a strong president. He's a commander in chief of the armed forces. He's going to take decisive action to get these rotten eggs. It's not the old army and the navy. There are a few who have this entitlement mentality. A better persona. I get power persona. I get people where they up. We go to cover me. The president is going to remove them and make it possible for the people of this country to benefit. For instance, uh, Emefule is gone. <laughs> Bawa is gone. So more heads will roll. Those who are standing as an impediment to the good and progress of this country, the president will not dally dally with them. He will not do sissy sissy with them. He's going to put and kick them out. And when he does that, we will have the unfettered power, encouragement to get ready for oil theft, which all my brothers in the Niger Delta, all of us have agreed. I don't share in that. You encourage people to kill other people. When the madness they call NSAR started, I was one of the people vocal opposed to that nonsense called NSARS. And Inabdikanu was walking free. What did he do? He poured petrol. He was walking free. He poured petrol on the flames for NSARS. Now, he has been caught. What of the people who have died? This is a criminal. He should face the law. 
What of the people who have died by, as I'm talking, Inam Dikano does not have any control over the, what is happening in the Southeast. Simeon Epa had come out pretending that he's with Inam Dikano. He has actually plotted a coup against Inam Dikano to take over the leadership of IPO. That is the truth of the matter. So releasing Inam Dikano is rewarding criminality and rewarding gruesome murder of innocent people. He should face the law for the actions and the instigation he has carried out. I cannot tell you what I discussed with the president. What I know that, like I told you, the president is a very firm personality. And when he takes a decision, when he came out and they were saying all sorts of things, no person had been so maligned, abused, made fun of like this president. Those of us who believe that it was the president's turn, we stood when he said Emiloko. It was firm. Even all the booing, the backstabbing. If there are Judases in the world, Jesus Christ had one Judas. His own Judas were in their legions. He survived it. So I'm not going to discuss or disclose what the president told me. Two. My dear sister, the people doing the bunkering had been there. A lot of people had come out to say it before this time. The people doing the bunkering are not our people because they cannot bring those big supercargo uh, ships, vessels that are, are almost the size of this villa. They don't have the resources. There are powerful cabals, most time operating from Abuja. Who know? And you saw it on television, where pipes are linked, not even pipes are linked to export terminals and diverted. How will that be possible that an ordinary person will go and do that? There are powerful forces in place far more stronger, who think they are far more stronger. But they've met their match. And their match is President Ahmad Bola Tinibu. He is going to bring all of them. He's going to expose all of them. And many people will be marching to Kujeb and Krikri prison. <laughs> Myself and Tom Polo are not in the same field. He is guiding pipelines. I am not guiding pipelines. And Tom Polo or myself, even if I'm giving, will not succeed if the president, the commander in chief of the armed forces, is not ready to stamp it, put his feet down, and say this should not continue. Because I will also be, I am speaking now 
because I know that the president will protect me because I'm saying the truth. Under another president, they might not give you the protection. So they might not give Tompolo the protection. You saw on television where Tompolo himself was accusing the military. I saw it on channel. I saw it on Arise. Tompolo himself was accusing the military. It is so for us, I know this president. And I know this president is a sickler for the rule of law. He's going to make sure we need all the money. Have you been to United Arab Emirates? Have you been to Qatar? Go there and see what they have used their oil to do. Why can't we use our oil to do something? Where is our, the oil money going? It's not me. Oh. Me, I talk, they say I talk very raw. I speak very raw. Me, I'm okay. I have four wives. I have 22 children. And I have several SUVs. It's only jet I've not bought. <laughs> so it's not me. No, I'm being frank with you. But when you know what is going on, the deprivation, when somebody calls you on the phone and say, my brother, I have not eaten since yesterday. The person went to school. The person has skills. But the system will not allow the person to excel. Why must we all become criminals to survive? Why must we all become beggars to survive? Why will opportunities not be given to us to raise our shoulders high and to be good men and women and to be good citizens? This is what it is. This is what Ahmed Bola Tinibu will bring about. And I believe it. And I know that he will succeed. I'm praying for him. And I'm also going to stand physically by him. Thank you, Thank you very much.